Okay, no. Hi there, fellow cyclists. I'm Escolius, and you may have watched my YouTube videos about my recent rides in Gran Canaria. And you, Toby, in particular, as you asked me to share something including power, gradient, speed, etc. So here we go, this is for you. You asked me about this after my blog post on the ascent to Pico de las Nieves that we did next day after this ride. But unfortunately, there is no footage available of that, as I explained in the blog. So let's see how did this Soria go. This is stage 5 of the bike week and the 9 km timed segment starts here. Here you see the data layer. On the right hand side there is the segment map and my location there. Below it there are altitude, distance and time. On the left hand side my heart rate, cadence and power as 30 second average. And in the middle, momentary power, speed and gradient. Many start this very first hairpin bend too hard and seem to be demoralized already. By the way, great views here, right from the very first hairpin bend. So my FTP is somewhere a bit north of 300 watts, maybe 3 and 10 watts or about uh, 3.8 watts per kilo. This clock segment will take something under an hour, so I feel safe to maintain something like 300 miles. Actually, I don't look at the computer very often during the climb. Instead, I ride by my gut feeling. Numbers like FTP or functional threshold power, in other words, the average power one can keep up for an hour, and for example numbers like heart rate threshold level, like anaerobic threshold, vary during the season and from year to year. Pro cyclists may test those several times a year. For me, it suffices to have a ballpark figure. Pay attention to the 30 second average power. It stays nicely a bit under my FTP figure. There are compact cranks on my Bianchi Ultra XR4 instead of the 1128 cassette that I had here three years ago. I've got now a 30 tooth sprocket as the largest this time. Many use even 32 or even 34 tooth sprockets here. This is my seventh consecutive day riding in this marvelous island. I'm not so fresh anymore and I have to save some energy for the Queen stage to be ridden tomorrow. As 30 second uh, moving average, it's good to keep it under 300 watts. How it's going? Fine. Okay, yeah. Let's say fine. Yeah. Good weather. Um, this morning we started from Mas Palomas early in the morning, rode here along the coastal GC500 as a group, taking it easy. And then, as you saw in the very beginning of the video, we had a full stop before this time segment started. I thought that net time uh, will define our packing order on the leaderboard, so I started riding a minute after the get-go. Well. It happened to be the total time from the start that was counted, but whatever, nevertheless we had a very, very good workout. I've been overtaking the slower ones as we see, and as I started a minute after the others, the guys riding my pace, or who are faster, well, they have gone long ago. Did you hear that clicking sound? 
This is one of the two flat sections where I got to use big ring for a while. This first part of Soria climb is about five and a half kilometers long. And the Strava segment of Soria ends here. And soon we turn left to the steeper second part. After the turn, the road is very steep right away. See how I anticipate and push 400 watts, soon 500 to keep momentum. Most of the riders are behind me and some have gone minutes ago. But luckily that other guy that I just overtook and who is about to catch me again provided me good company for this second part. Now there are double digit gradients. So I'm very happy to have 34 to 30 uh, gears. And look how determined and strong that guy is. Gradually, meter by meter, he is getting back to my wheel. I'm not sure where that funny huffing and puffing sound comes from. Is it me or saddle or bike? Yeah, um, hey, have you paid attention to the distance and time on the data overlay? They were correct in the beginning of this video, but uh, when editing, I've made some error. So uh, from this point onwards, they are not correct. All the other data is perfect though. In the beginning of the second part of the climb, as long as there are houses on the slopes, the tarmac is fine. But uh, quite soon after, not only will it be steep, but one has to negotiate potholes and very very crappy surface too. Traction up there resists moving forward. So, here the change happens. Welcome to the misery pot. Did I mention already that this second part of the climb is also called as El Pinar or Pine? Well, naturally you see pines, but just not uh, whatever pines. These are endemic Canary Island pines that grow only on these islands. The needles of these pines can harvest moisture from the mist and especially from the clouds. Water condensates on the long droopy needles and falls as raindrops. And this allows the pine forests to grow in areas with little rainfall like here, provided that they are high enough to get covered in clouds during the winter. The same long needles protect the trees from fires by burning, burning fast before the heat damages the growing buds. Well, uh, riding there this week, I was wondering how all these pines, they are actually quite small. How can they look so small and young? And uh, now when editing the video, I am reading on GranCanariaInfo.com that uh, Gran Canaria's forests 
are recovering after centuries of overexploitation and most of the forest you see was planted after the 60s. Big old pine trees are rare as most were cut down for timber and charcoal. It seems that holding this uh, 280 or 300 watts is a bit too high for him. He looks almost cooked. It's my turn to overtake now and uh, I decide to up my power just a little bit and see what happens. I think consistency is the key now. My heart rate of uh, 152-153 seems to be in the right uh, hoods, uh, so I know that I can keep this nice. And I, I see that I read the situation right. He tails and uh, gradually he is left further behind. Now, we are finally at the last hairpin bend. You see the gradient easing to single digit numbers. Some 700 meters left at the bend and after the video clip cut, I'd say 500 or 600 meters. It's tempting as one is tired by now and it, as the gradient uh, eases, to ease off and to forget FTP and enduring power levels. You see me dropping to Mickey Mouse levels soon, and yet I overtake another rider. Now I realize how close I am to finish, you will see it soon too when I'll switch to the front camera. There is still quite, uh, quite a lot of energy reserves in my legs, so I put the pedal to the metal and uh, accelerate, which is not so easy avoiding the worst potholes and other rough patches of the road. Less than 100 meters now out of the saddle and uh, in an attack mode. And that either isn't very much after this climb, only some mere 800 watts maximum. Yet it gives the feeling that I gave everything and that I raced it all the way to the finish.